Uh, so what's the deal here? Are we working or aren't we? Been having trouble with this. Uh, last trip was out to Warsaw, Indiana. It was a nice flight. It was interesting. There was uh, weather to contend with and all sorts of neat stuff. I used flight following, which was fun. Uh, only to come back and find uh, nothing had been, uh, there had been no audio, uh, which kind of made it a useless video. Uh, there would have been other neat stuff. I was out there to visit a guy that's restoring a, an old Super Cub, Piper Super Cub, and that was all very interesting. And, you know, with the weather to deal with and the flight following, it was actually a little more interesting than normal, but with no audio, it was nothing. So this may or may not be working. Um, if it is, you'll hear about it. If it's not, you won't hear a damn thing. You, you'll just wonder what happened to that guy that used to make those videos. Uh, today <coughs> is just a little shakedown flight again, because I haven't flown for a while. Um, going to do a little scenario wherein, let's assume I was night flying, because with the, uh, the new FAA med rules, uh, I'll be able to do that again uh, once I get a physical out of the way with my family doctor. Uh, <coughs> so I might go back to flying tonight, something I've never really enjoyed. Um, in Canada, uh, you have to be instrument rated, or at least you used to be, I don't know if it's still true. Uh, there was a time, or potentially there still is a time, when you had to be instrument rated to fly at night, and that's because it's harder to find things at night. So what I'm going to do is use my fancy equipment here and set up uh, an entire flight based on uh, the GPS and uh, maybe the autopilot, maybe the flight director, I haven't decided which. Um, it's going to be pretty straightforward. We have uh, Circleville, which is Pickaway County Memorial Airport, KCYO, um, not too far from us. And this is the uh, IFR approach for that. So I'm going to just kind of use that as guidance because it leads you right to the runway. So the first thing I'll do is set up a route um, with well, flax. I don't even need a route. I'll just do a direct to. So we're going to go direct to Wavex. And once about Wavex, I have to go direct to runway 19 of Circleville, or the vertical nav won't work. It can't be part of a route. It has to be a direct to. So I'll do a direct to Wavex and then a direct to Circleville and engage the uh, vertical nav and see how that goes. And what I'm going to do is aim for about 800 feet above the ground, two miles from the threshold, which is clear enough from the airport that I can then make a decision whether I would land on one nighter, one nighter, or circle around to the other runway, which is runway one. Uh, so we'll see what happens when we get there. Um, for now, I'm just going to go ahead and do the direct two, and that's a map direct two. And I have to pull this out, put it back, because it gets confused. And I want to go down to. Here. W, oh, I'm sorry, Whiskey Alpha Victor, and that's enough for it to find it, so direct to that. Okay, that's that done. Um, there are some settings I haven't looked at. I, I hope I can find them again. I want to set the settings. That's probably autopilot set up. Let's try that. Uh, nope, that's not it. Ah, shoot, I wish I should have looked at this before I left the house, because I really would like to change my options, the options that I first used the first time I tried this, uh, because I, I think they were getting me too close to the airport and too low uh, on a VFR day. I didn't really want that. But now I can't find out how to do the... Uh, I'm darned if I can find out where that setup was. Darn it. Um, it may not have been in the system setup, to be fair. Uh, Exit out of this. It's the uh, autopilot menu. Uh, no. Well, I guess maybe that's not what I'm going to do today. Um, well, I just won't use the vertical nav, which is just fine. Um, but a bit of a disappointment. So. Okay, here it is. It's in the uh, map setup menu. Uh, vertical speed, required, requested, options. Destination airport, altitude 1,000 feet above where point. I want destination runway. I want to be at the destination runway. I want to be uh, 800 feet above ground, above the threshold. That's fine. Uh, back at. Go go back, please. Oh, except okay. Above the threshold at, and I want to make this two miles. Two miles. And a target angle of three degrees works well. Okay, that should do it. Now we're all set. Okay. All right, the rest of this for the, in the short term is just going to be us getting in the air and all that. Uh, and with that direct wave us, it's not going to be particularly exciting. So I'll catch you later. Oh, it's, uh, weather is, wind is calm. 
and when the wind is calm, the default runway is runway four. Uh, and typically, um, and somewhat relatively recently, uh, instead of going all the way down to four, I'll request two two. And I seem to have trained them because uh, <laughs> uh, just talked at both ground and uh, wind is calm and uh, cleared me to taxi to runway and then you pause for a minute and said two two. So uh, uh, maybe they just remember. I don't know. There will be an error here in a minute. I'm going to go ahead and set up the avionics now. Uh, we're just just short of takeoff now. I'm going to make my altitude 3,000 feet. And that's based on this little chart. You can get these off of air nav. Um, I'm going to be at 3,000 feet at WAVIX. And then I can descend to, well, if it was an actual instrument approach, I could go down to the minimum. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go down to pattern altitude. So uh, really, it's pretty simple. We're going to direct to this WAVIX, and this is where I'm going to do my direct to the CYO and set, engage the vertical nav hold, or the vertical nav. I'm going to be an altitude hold to make it work. I'll, be, I'll engage vertical nav there, take my direct to of runway 19, and it should lead us right on in. So we're on power frequency. I've done the run-up. I've done my, in one more time, checking the canopy. Everything looks good. And I'm using my backup headsets because I've had so much trouble with the Dave parts. I don't know if it's the Dave parts or the airplane, but these seem to work a little bit better, so we'll see. They work fine on the intercom. It's just on the comm radio that I have a problem. I'm not sure if it's the headsets, the jacks, or the radio. It's a mystery. Here we go. Full power, 284, drop the ready for takeoff run. Ready. Ready for takeoff runway 22. Two. Spur on 4, Delta Golf, runway 22, two, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, runway 22, two, Delta Golf. Kind of a shame if my Dave Clark won't work. I mean, they're very, very nice headsets. I don't know what the problem with them could be. They're just finicky, I guess. These are little air comps. These were too cheap, but they seem to work. make my turn onto the direct to WebEx whenever I want. Uh, generally, I make sure I get all the runway behind me before I start drifting away from it. There's no hurry to get on course because uh, I can reset that direct to quite easily if it gets a little bit off. Not a big problem. I'm going to head on the flight director because that's always fun. And we're going to want to do nav. So there's my flight director on the nav. You can't see it. Um, I got an iPhone with me. I suppose I could kind of hold in front of that if I wasn't hand flying. And perhaps I will when I'm no longer hand flying. So we'll clear the airport and uh, just about pattern altitude. So I'm going to go ahead and do a map, direct, direct, just to reset that. And then follow the flight direct. I'll actually let the autopilot do it. There we go. Autopilot nav. And I'm going to tell it I want altitude and up. And that should take me to 3,000 feet. I'm still kind of covering the stick. And so I'm 100% sure that the autopilot is fully engaged. And even then, I tend to cover the stick a little bit if it's rough or bumpy. Um, I mean, your hand has to be somewhere. It might as well be down there guarding the stick. Everything seems to be working perfectly. We're on our way to Lavix. Uh, we'll level at 3,000 and uh, see what happens from there. Um, I'll be in altitude hold mode the whole way. I'm just going to go ahead and let the autopilot fly it. That's easy enough. And, and see how that works out. It may get a little hectic as we get closer to where I have to uh, do the direct to the CL CYO. Um, I can have that set up and ready to go in the map. Uh, I can go to map and uh, direct to... Uh, now we don't have a CYO in there, damn it. I want to go direct to an airport. There we go. And I would have thought recent would be in there, CYO. I guess I don't go there very often. Oh, been a long, long time. All right, so we're going to go ahead and type it in. Airport. Uh, kilo. If I say kilo. There we go. Well, I'm having trouble with the output today. Uh, Charlie. Yankee. Oscar. Now, I'm not going to do the direct view yet. I'm just going to leave that sitting there. And that'll be ready uh, when I need it quickly, in theory. 
So we can go ahead and throttle back, get back down below 5500. And everything's looking good on the instruments. Nobody else flying yet today. I imagine they will be. It's a beautiful day. Might get a little hot. All right, uh, turn you on again when we get the Lavix. So we're uh, four miles from Lavix. I'm gonna slow the plane down a little bit. Uh, we don't need to go blazing into this. Uh, we can do this at about 90 knots. Now remember, it's night and it's pitch dark out here. And if you look around uh, this vast expanse, uh, it does get dark out here. Uh, there's not a lot of city lights when you get this far away from the city, of course. And if there's no moon, it can be just hideously dark out here. Uh, so we're really on instruments right now in my scenario. Um, I'm looking outside because there would be enough lights to tell the horizon, although on a very clear night, uh, the stars can uh, the stars can look like ground lights and vice versa. So you still really have to be looking at the instruments. Um, I guess I do anyway. I, I don't do a lot of night flying. I've never done a lot of night flying. So go zoom ahead on this. Uh, we got another um, and, and, uh, two and a half miles to go, and I want to be ready on that direct tube. And uh, now I went back to see, I went back to Lavix on me. I want to get down to CIO. So we'll be ready when we get to that. And the point of waiting for Lavix is to get on that line, uh, the line between Lavix and CIO. If I, if I do direct you directly over Lavix, I'm going to be right on that line. If I do it too soon, I'm going to be coming in at an angle, which isn't a horribly big deal. But, you know, we want it to look pretty much... The reason for doing this, the reason for coming down that instrument approach is it's guaranteed, more or less, uh, to be obstacle free. If I start uh, kind of ad hoc and coming in from different angles, you don't have that guarantee anymore. Well, as much of a guarantee as it ever really is. Uh, so we really want to be, as much as possible, we want to do the lap ups to CYO and see what happens, make sure that works okay. I don't know how much button pushing it's going to take to do it. I think I can do the, rec the direct to. Uh, and get that going, and then fiddle with selecting the runway. But I've never tried it this way. I've usually planned it ahead of time. I've never done. Uh, I've never done it as part of a route. Uh, so we're getting ready. To, we're very, very close. So I'm going to go ahead and do the direct two to CYO. And now I need to go back into I think direct two. Oh no, I need to go to the airport. Well, maybe I do go to the direct two. Let's see. Oops. Yes. Go back to that. I really wanted to open the screen. That's not what I wanted to do at all. Um, and let's get slowed down. The throttle has crept up on me when I wasn't really flying the plane. Uh, now that's going to take us... Okay, it's correcting for wind. That's nice. Now to get to... Oh, I don't remember how to do it all of a sudden. Uh, map, direct to... Uh, runway. And it's on one. I want it on 19. And I want to go direct to that. And I want V nav. So I have a direct to, nope, I'm still on, yeah, do I have a direct to? Direct to CYO, yeah, except I want a runway, I want runway 19, uh, at flight plan maybe, and then, uh, nope, that's not what I want either, I don't know what I'm doing. I still want to get, I really just want that, um, damn it. Map, direct to, runway 19, direct to. Now it's doing it. Okay, now I want VNAV. Now, what did that do for me? Does that should go, oh, I have to go down. There we go. Right? There it goes. Now that looks like it's just selecting the default um, are we in VNAV or not? Altitude 2900 VNAV, there we go. And we should be going down to uh, 1485. But honestly, it doesn't really look like it's doing it. No, I'm not doing it. We're going to CYO 19 direct to, and I have VNAV. Let's go back to altitude hold. Altitude. Disconnect. Now it's altitude hold. VNAV. Let. Uh, maybe I have to get closer. I'm, a, I'm a still uh, eight miles out, so it may be an issue of just getting closer. So we'll go ahead and leave it at 2900 because it's happy there. 
And uh, you see why we practice these things. He really wouldn't want to be futzing around like this at night. And we're going to go ahead and get on the, the Unicom. Uh, which is... Uh, da -da 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 -da. 70, I don't want to go quite that slow. And we're three miles out. So at two miles out, we should be at, it says 1485, which is fine. Um, I'm not sure which that pattern altitude on this place is 1700, so that's a couple hundred below pattern altitude. But that's a, a little bit high on pattern altitude. That's a thousand foot pattern altitude, usually they're 700 or 800 feet. I should look that number up. There's no precise number, it depends on conditions. Uh, but it's pretty flat out here. Um, so in any event, 1500 seems reasonable, especially within two miles. Two and a half miles. We're still high. We're 1,600 yet. Ah, can't get the autopilot. Can't get the nose to go down. We're looking for some kind of lift. There it goes. So here comes my two-mile marker, and there's 1,550 feet at two point. Okay, so that's close enough. 1,500, and there's the runway. So I easily could set up. I can go ahead and cancel this now. So autopilot off. Disconnect. And level out, and I can easily go ahead and make this into a right, I'm sorry, a left crosswind for runway one. And from that altitude from two miles out, I also could have, I could have safely made a straight in landing. Uh, once I got the flaps down, I wouldn't have had any trouble making that landing. So this would just become a left downwind. Back at the 163 Tango Risky is five miles to the west. And there we are. 
So I would have runway lights by now. Uh, I'd be able to see the runway, probably not much Newer else. Traffic around the camp left, base to final. Uh, Newer chief, full stop. But that seems to have worked nicely. Um, once I figured that I was figured out that I was turning it, or expecting it to respond too early. You have to be closer to the airport for it to work. So that's why we practice. And I'll go ahead and make a touch and go because I, I'm not really current, well, I'm current, but I haven't flown for a few weeks. Circle Atlantic County traffic, we can now on 284 above golf, left downwind runway 1, touch and go, Circle Atlantic County. Looking for a wind sock, there's really nothing going on down here at all. I think they have an AWOS here. Uh, weather. Nope, don't know much of anything about the weather here. Nope, no weather. All right, let's go ahead. I'm at 80, 80 so I get the flops down. Flops down, flaps down. Trim it up, the takeoff trim, so I get a very nice descent. Made a little tight to the runway, so my left base is going to be somewhat small. That 65 knots is good. Hot in here. Okay. Sorry, I got to go a little further out. This plane doesn't come down like the rest of the RD. Well, the RD-9, I guess, has got a big wing. I get pretty far out here. Uh, the second landing I ever made in an RV-12 was at this airport, and I had to do a go-around because I got too close in. and didn't get the airplane to come down fast enough. I was used to that RV-6. Okay, we're pretty far out now. Circle of traffic, we're still on 2 4 Left base, 101, touch go. Circle of traffic, 7-5-7-4-6, left base, and my radio has gotten sloppy in the three weeks since I've flown. Well, even now, it still looks pretty high. I think my idle is set a bit high. And I had them turn it up a little bit uh, at annual. I had my annual done professionally for the first time and probably the last time. Uh, asked him to few more RPM because the thing was stalling on the runway if I got all the way back to the full idle. Uh, now it feels uh, a little too high. I just have trouble getting the plane slowed down. I don't know if you caught that. In that left turn to final, I put in a little top rudder and kept the airspeed high enough. I didn't stall it. And, uh, did a little bit of a forward slip to some of that extra altitude. Worked out well. Now this runway is uphill, so you got to flare a little bit more than usual. You got to slam right in, like that, you slam right into the side of it. Oops. All right, off we go. And that's that. So we've uh, received our approach clearance for Bolt Tower. It's uh, report midfield left downwind runway 22, and uh, that's about it. Pretty straightforward. We're at 3,000 and uh, 7 miles. I'm going to go ahead and start descending to the pattern altitude, which I believe is 1,800 feet or so. Let's take a quick look because sometimes we forget 1,700. All right. So let's look at this again. That's uh, map. So. That's 1,700 on top of 904 elevation, so that's an 800-foot AGL pattern altitude, whereas CYO was 1,000 feet. So, there you go. Uh, four miles to go. I'll be on the ground soon. Uh, I hope this was interesting, and if there's other scenarios that would be of interest, um, type them up in the comments to the YouTube. Uh, because I'm, I'm trying to learn as much about this thing as I can. Uh, but my local flying is not um, 
there, there's not much I do that's out of the ordinary. Um, anyway, uh, anything that would be of interest as far as uh, how to do it with the Dyn and Skyview and the autopilot, sure, just leave a note in the comments and I'll, if it's interesting or uh, not overly dangerous or I'm smart enough to figure it out, uh, I'll go ahead and do it, make a video, so just let me know. Uh, I guess I'll leave you along for the landing while I was there. Yeah, we got another 400 feet to get down to pattern altitude. What a gorgeous day for July. Not hazy, a little hazy, but I'm seeing all the way to the horizon. Nice, nice day. It's 1900. Get it slowed down a little bit. That's the uh, ground starting to heat up a little bit from the sun. It's getting a little bumpy. Don't know what it's going to eventually get to today. Probably hot and humid because it is Ohio and it is July. Now we're just about where I'm going to make my turn into the midfield left downwind for 2-2 and I'll go ahead and give a call while I'm in the turn. Makes it really easy for me to see when I've got the wings up like that. So 3, 2, 1. Full power for that ground to the left downwind 2-2. Four Delta Golf, runway 22, clear to land. Four Delta Golf. That was easy. My tongue is working now. Should have had that second cup of coffee, but that would have presented a, a, probably by now a whole other distraction. All right, let's go ahead and get our trim set to take off slash landing. Down go the flaps. And look, it goes right to the speed I want. I just love that. Just set it right where you want it for takeoff, and it works just as well for landing. Now, I don't let the airplane come down quite as fast here, because I'm not going to land right on the numbers. I'm going to land just a wee bit long, um, so as I can minimize my time on the runway. I don't need to do that today. There's nobody else around. but. I do it as a matter of routine, um, it's practice. Uh, being able to put the plane down where you want the plane to come down or touch down is something you have to practice. But I could uh, certainly practice by putting it on the numbers and face a lengthy taxi back to the back. Actually, it's not that bad, it's like a third of the runway. Um, if I put it on the numbers, now well, let's go ahead and try it. Let's put it on the numbers, I don't do that often, let's practice that. Of course, now I have a little extra altitude. But we know we can get rid of that if we need to. if we can get it on the numbers. That wasn't the razor sharp turn to final, that was kind of a circling. Now the Vassies are all going to look like I'm too low because the Vassies don't aim you at the numbers, they aim you down the runway, so we can ignore the Vassie lights. Okay. Okay. Little long. Nope. Right on him. Right on him. Let's see. Now we have this long, long ride <laughs> down to Alpha Three, which is going away. It'll soon be worse. I'll soon have to go all the way down to Alpha Four. I want to tear out Alpha 3 in a couple months. All right. Four Delta Golf Fighter Alpha 3. Straight ahead of Park Monitor Ground, point eight. Nope, not going to talk to me today. What's up with this guy? going to make me do it. Straight ahead of Four Delta Golf, Texas. Straight ahead of Alpha 3 to parking. Straight Alpha 3 to park, Four Delta Golf. And I guess he uh, doesn't care what frequency I'm on, but I'm going to go ahead to ground. That way I don't forget next time I jump in the airplane and fly. It's embarrassing. I don't do it often, but when I do, it's embarrassing.
Okay, well, it's all just driving from here, isn't it? See ya. It struck me after I said it that I shouldn't have said driving. What I should have said, it's all Uber from here, which is uh, amateur taxi. <laughs> okay, I'm done.